Hey everyone, Derek here from Mapix. Got this Western awesome Digital MyCloud hard drive in here for uh, data recovery today. And today we're going to be looking at it. Um, if we're not able to access it, a uh, customer can't access it on the network. There seems to be a problem just accessing it in general, right? But they do say it does power on. They try to reset the network. They try logging in. They try lots of different things, but they can't do it. So it looks like there may be some type of uh, issue there. I'm not sure really if it's powering on or what's going on with it. Um, but we want to go ahead and see what's going on, right? So uh, let's open it up now because uh, this is obviously this is a NAS drive. This is a network, well, a network drive, right? So it does have only very, very few ports, very few ways to access it there. Uh, usually you connect it through your router and then you can see it on the network there. But can't see it, can't access it. So let's get right into it. Let's pop it open and see what we got. Now in these are obviously this Western Digital Drive. So uh, or in these are three and a half inch Western Digital Drives. So let's pop it open. So we open this. So this just slides up here. And oh, look at that. It's a nice one. It's a big uh, six terabyte drive. And now these ones, again, they're tied to um, of another PCB to make this more accessible, right? It's a big three and a half inch drive and it connects to um, another PCB board, right? That allows it to have internet access. And um, but when this fails as well, if there is a failure with this one, then there can be a problem really with the drive here. So we need to remove this part. Because uh, always these are just points of failures so that can also happen on there. It's not as likely, but uh, we need to see why it's being caused to not access or not do anything else, right? Now again, it's a NAS drive, um, but they still work very similarly. Um, this isn't like a NAS drive where it's mirrored or connected to another way, or it doesn't seem to be. It's just more of accessing it over a network. So um, if there is a problem with like an actual NAS drive, if you have two drives in here, then you have to most likely then it's, if you have two other drives that were in here, then that would be a different type of uh, recovery there because it's not as fun as doing a single drive, right? So, all right, so let's go ahead and open this up. So, little stubs came out there and so we can remove this part and we want to access the main drive here because here's our main SATA drive. And this has some marker on it. I hope this doesn't mean this has been somewhere else or cracked open. I don't see anything obvious here. I gotta answer that phone. So we did notice here on the sideboard there there is a little bit of flux there. Um, not really sure if that's going to be uh, somewhat related there to the problem, but I mean the board looks okay. But there's always capacitors. There's always stuff that goes on the sep separate board here anyway, and we need to see what is going on with this drive we need to see if we can access it if there's any other problems now it is a mac drive um actually i believe is it a mac drive yeah so i don't know this customer this one actually is a mac drive uh, but what i can do is i can hook it up to our sata connection and um actually let's just do that i actually don't have to pull out the sled anymore because i have this <laughs> i have another connector here um i've actually here, had here for so for a little while so i'll just use this little connector and you know how it works, man. If you have one connector, you have to use multiple connectors for Macs. So we'll have like a USB-C connector to it and see if it just plugs in and works, which is, oh man, wouldn't that be just great and wonderful if it just worked. So let's go ahead and plug this in, um, bring this up. And I got our world famous MacBook Pro that we've had help on with using DFU modes and installing other stuff as well. That's been great for our repair efficiency here so let's go ahead and see if they can do it again but well, taking a look at this you know um, these are nice they're very nice to access uh, they have an app though can be good can be bad depends on how you set it up you know but you can access the Western Digital a few different ways um, you can access it out of these my clouds through a network you can connect it directly to your router or you can um, use the Western Digital My App, which I think it still kind of works the same way, which I mean is you can use it through, like you can mount the drive in the network or you can just, you can drag and drop files uh, inside as well. Okay, so let's put in my sled here because the other one wasn't powering on. Maybe it's not a good one. Let's plug this in. And now what I need to do, is this one actually has its own USB-C connector. Let's go ahead and ah, plug it, it's underneath it. Okay. Okay, so drive is spinning. I can feel that, which is good. But again, this is a NAS drive, so maybe it'll give throw a little fit. I'll go ahead and check my disk utility. This is on our screen, and we do have it plugged in here. 
and we're taking a look and we see that the six terabyte is in fact uh, plugged in, right? But we're not seeing what's or how much data is there. It looks like it's mounted because if we take a look, it's not, um, it's not, not highlighted there, but we can hit, let's run a first day and just see what's going on. See if we can read anything. Of course, it's not gonna help you at all. It's not really gonna do anything else. So just disconnecting it isn't really helping whatsoever. So what we need to do is we need to probably work this on, obviously it's a NAS drive and it possibly could have an encryption, so it's giving a problem. Um, it, we aren't able to really access a time machine here because sometimes these can be like time machine drives um, and really see. But we, we click that and nothing really pops up. It doesn't really show up over a network, obviously, because it's not really a network drive, but it shows something in the USB-C, right? So I'm gonna disconnect it real quick. I'm gonna just reconnect it there, see if anything will change. Let me see, so it pops up, uh, still again. Still giving the same type of thing on it, right? So you're gonna see multiple partitions. This just randomly popped up, it did take a bit of time. Um, you could see that anyway, but, and then when you try to put in any type of recovery tool, there could be some type of encryption, something else going on with it. So you need to find another way to access it. So to access it and to see everything else here with the drive, we would have to use our more advanced data recovery tools for that. And it's a very similar process for when we do any type of like uh, head replacements or any other physical damage with it. We have to work with the drive this way to at least access it, to work with the drive, make any type of images, all that stuff. So we're able to do that and we're actually able to see there's multiple partitions here, but we're actually able to see um, after even after working with it for a bit that there are multiple partitions and we actually see that there's a very specific one that shows here that there is a data partition. And under here, there's actually a time machine backup and then obviously there is more of the customer's data here, but we're able to access it and uh, we're able to uh, recover the data for this one and we're very happy about that. So we got the data off of this Western Digital MyCloud. See, it was a Mac drive and it was a NAS drive as well. You probably noticed that there's also like a USB port in there. That's not really for USB, just for, for accessing the drive and the data itself. That's actually, com it's completely different. You can always check the ports, but it's never those type of things for it. It's mainly in there for accessing it via Ethernet. Um, and it's supposed to be using your, your internet connection speed at least for that right where you connect it to the router. It's very easy for other people to access that as well. These are nice drives for that, for accessing it, um, especially if you have like a household or if you have like a workplace environment like us, or if you have other things, other places that need, other people that need to access it on your network as well. It's easy to, to drag and drop things much more faster and use in ethernet speeds. And you've probably seen drives that have like two and a half, um, or you've probably seen drives that have like 2.5 gigabits, and then you also see there are some 10 gigabyte e Ethernet connections that are a lot more expensive. I think the price has gone on a lot, a lot more there, but obviously you need to have the uh, internet connection for that as well. So, but they're nice drives for, for that reason. Um, this one also does have like a time capsule, you can back it up, but it's a NAS and a time capsule at the same time, but we're lucky that the data was mainly accessible through uh, the NAS. Um, you can also, we have a video showing how to get the, on how to do recovery on the sparse bundle image that's there too, which is pretty much the time capsule type image and, the, and you would need to mount that a certain way too. So hope you guys enjoyed watching these videos. I know we've been making a lot of data recovery ones recently, but we get a lot of them in and it's always fun to do those. And we also like doing a lot of board repairs, MacBook repairs, liquid spill repairs and those things. So hope you guys enjoy watching and see you guys next video. Thanks a lot guys. Take care. Bye.